Hello viewers, I welcome you to today's midday prayer coming to you live from SNN TV. Today we'll be dealing with a topic that says, looking up to God in times of marital crisis or marital challenges. We're we'll reading from the Gospel of John chapter 2. Gospel of God, John chapter 2, verse 1 and 3. And in the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. They have no wine. Child of God, in our world today, a lot of home is battling too many crises. A lot of marriages are passing through hell. A, mar a lot of marriages is at the verge of collapse. There are so many court cases concerning marriage. Some have divorced already. Some are in the process. Some have lost hope in their partners. Some no longer trust their partners. Some have seen marriage as a hell. But hear me, that Lord is bringing a word to you this moment. That you should look up to him in that time, in this very time of marital crisis. A lot of people have defined marriage, especially the people of the world, in their own sentences. Some say that marriage is a scam. Some say that men is a scam. Some say that women are a problem of the world. But hear me, if you look up to God, and realize the intention of God towards creation. Realize the purpose and mind of God towards humanity. You will really understand that God made all this beautiful in his own time. Where we read that scripture says that a family had wedding in a kind of Galilee. And they invited the mother of Jesus. And Jesus and the disciples were also invited. That's very interesting. That is to say that the beginning of this marriage, that this family acknowledged the presence of God. They acknowledge the importance of God. They acknowledge God to be the vehicle that will carry them through in that journey of their marriage. They understood that on their own, they cannot be able to run sufficiently or efficiently. The program of God concerning their union, that was why they invited Jesus. And the scripture says, along the line, where the celebration was going on, at the peak of the ceremony, the wine got finished. At that point in time, shame was about to befall them. At that point in time, people were about to mock them. But thank God that the mother of Jesus was there. Thank God that Jesus was at the center of that marriage. Thank God that the family, they look up to Jesus. Thank God they were able to look up to God. That they recognized that the owner of the universe, who was in the midst, is able to turn all situations around is able to bring solution and succor into that very crisis. And the mother of Jesus went to him and said, Son, wine has finished. Child of God, even though at that moment in time, Jesus replied and said, Woman, why are you troubling me? Of course, we know that my time is not yet, but what scripture told us that Jesus did his miracle. Wherever you are watching me from, maybe at this moment in time, your marriage is at the peak of collapsing, is at the verge of crushing. That Lord is bringing a word to heal that marriage now. That scripture says, and Jesus gave a word. He sent disciples to gather empty jars. He sent them to fill the jars with water. When they did that, he asked them to give the wine to the celebrant. And when they did that, they realized that the water has turned to wine. Hear me, that Lord is bringing a fresh wine into that marriage. Wine here symbolizes joy. 
It symbolizes the fruit of the Holy Ghost. It symbolizes the presence of God. It symbolizes happiness. It symbolizes the glory of God in that your very home. Maybe at this point in time, we are starting losing interest in one another. You no longer trust your partner. You no longer relate together as usual. At this point in time, two of you, one is facing Karuna, one is facing Sokoto. Two of you are no longer in union as you used to be because of one thing or the other. The Lord is saying to you this moment, look up to me for I'm the Lord that heal. And the Lord is healing that your marriage right now in the precious name of Jesus. Hear me, no one has ever looked up to God and went back in shame. As many that look up to him, the scripture says, that their faces, they were radiant and are not ashamed. I don't know what is sponsoring Christ into that home. I don't know what is bringing that shame. I don't know what is bringing about those situations that are very, very ugly, that you never prayed for, that you never expected. As a child of God, you have prayed wonderfully and hoped wonderfully that your marriage will be heaven and earth. But what we are seeing around you now is making you to doubt as if God no longer answers prayer. I want you to know that in John of life, there are moments of trials, there are moments of temptations, there are moments of difficulties. But one thing that is assured is this, that when you call upon the Lord in that time of crisis, in that time of difficulties, as you shall look upon the Lord, he will, bring in, he will be bringing healing to your womb right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The scripture says in the book of Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1, that the heart of a king and a king belongeth to God, and he turneth it to where it pleases him. That your husband's heart belongs to God. That your wife's heart belongs to God. That your partner's heart belongs to God. God is able, don't give up yet, to turn his heart back home, to turn her heart back home. Maybe he has been hijacked by daughter to Jezebel. With all that is happening in our society today, that so many evil, agents of Satan, has went on the street hijacking people's husband. But I pray for you right now that it's under the sound of my voice. Any spell of the wicked casted against your marriage to break down your home is being rescued right now. That our Lord is delivering your family right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, I don't know if the battle you are facing in your marriage now is a result of childbearing. What they call impotence. What they call barrenness. I would like you to understand that God of Sarah has not gone on holidays. God of Hannah has not slept. I would like to understand that God of Elizabeth is still on a throne. That same God that met them at the point of their knees. That God has not changed. That God is visiting your home right now. Hear me, child of God. There's no situation that God steps in that remains the same. For demon travel at his presence. All that submit before God. Situations submit before God. When the Lord steps into your matter as you look up to him, everything will begin to respond. I speak healing and I speak restoration into your body system right now. Let everything that's not working well, according to the mind of God in your life, begin to work well right now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. The scripture says in John chapter 4, if you read from verse 28 to 29, there was a woman from a Samaria. The scripture said that this woman has been thirsty, going to pool every now and then to fetch water because of the disappointment she had been going through in her marriage. But one day, she encountered Jesus. Jesus, we're encountering you today. Jesus, they're encountering you today. The scripture said that this woman went as usual to fetch water. She never knew that heaven had decided her case on that day. She encountered Jesus and she left her water pot. She left her jar behind and ran to the city to announce her encounter. And from that day onwards, her life never remained the same. All her disappointment in marriage, having married five men, but was not living with anyone. This woman had the gift of stepping into marriage, but the issue that she had, the problem of sustaining that marriage. But that day after the encounter, her story changed. That same prophecy I bring into your life, that same message I bring into your life, that your marriage is being hid from every disaster, from every disappointment, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, child of God. That scripture says concerning Hannah, that her rival Penina, you shall torment her. She will torment her because she has no child. She will ridicule her because she has no child. She will insult her because she has no child. But one day, 
they went up to Shiloh as usual. But that very day, she decided her destiny. She said she will not come to Shiloh and then goes back to receive the same insult again. Because she has come to Mount Zion, where she can look up to God. She has come to Mount Zion, where solution is available. She has come to a holy place of God, a place of an encounter. Just as the word of God is coming to you now, is a moment of divine encounter. It's a moment of turning around. It's a moment of testimony. It's a moment of open heaven. It's a moment of blessings. It's a moment where you will carry your testimony to your hand. That scripture say that Hannah began to pray. She looked up to God and she cried unto heaven. Eli came in and misled us to her. But the woman, <laughs> she that knows what she's looking for. She cried unto God more. That scripture said that that day, uh, when Eli realized that this woman was actually pouring her heart to God, she released the word of blessing. And said, let it be unto you according to her desire. The same way I pray for you this moment. Whatever you are desiring to be a blessing into your home, let it be unto you right now. According to her desire in that precious name of Jesus Christ. And that day, her story changed because she looked up to God, child of God. Maybe you have been running to native daughter. You have been visiting a court kingdom. You have been going to so many places, drinking what you are not supposed to drink, taking what you are not supposed to drink. Come out from those places. Help does not come from those areas. That scripture says that the gift of God makes one rich and does not ask sorrow. For the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Why should God come to give us life and give us abundantly? Any gift that comes from the devil is a gift of sorrow. Do not receive child from the devil because he will give you trouble later. Do not receive children from the devil because it is a sorrow in disguise. Therefore, as you receive the word of God this moment, let your hope, let your faith <coughs> increase as the Lord is meeting you at this moment, at the point of your knees, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I began to pray for you right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, every spell cast against your womb, every spell holding your womb from bearing children, in the name of Jesus, I command that spell to break now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I lose you from the grip of witchcraft. I break that evil spell. I destroy those covers. By the authority of the Holy Ghost, I declare, let there be war into the camp of the witches, into the camp of the wizard, into the altar where they are holding your children bound. Any satanic gates, every demonic hedges that lock up your children. In the name of Jesus, I break them now. I command your children to be released in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The scripture says that you shall no more be them barren, but you shall be fruitful. That scripture says that you shall surround your table. Therefore, I began to declare, let those children begin to comfort. In the precious name of Jesus, do desire to win, carry them now. Do desire to replace, carry them now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Whatever that block your fallopian tube, let it be open now. Let it be removed now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, every spiritual forces that is having clamping down, your spermatozoa well from being reproductive. I command it now to be broken by fire in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Every enemy from the pit of hell fighting your marital peace, fighting your marital joy, fighting your settlement. I command the power behind them to be rolled away by fire. Any power that possess your partner that he no longer come home, I command his senses to return. That scripture says that he, when the prodigal son come back to his senses, may the Lord touch that your partner now. Let his senses or her senses return back to the family. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, whatsoever be the pipe of the enemy they have put into your home to suck your joy, I cut off that evil pipe. In the name of Jesus Christ, I began to speak over your life. Let your marriage be healed. Let your family be healed. Let your children be healed. Let your home be healed from every standing invaders in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, gracious God. If as I trust you, Lord, that you have bring healing and succor into every home right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, viewers. And I hope that you will join us in the same station, same time, for this life transforming encounter. God bless you. Hello. For the week is the one. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy made glad the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.